What is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is an incredibly serious show. Uh, so stick around. We're going to talk about, of course, what is going on with Russia and UK, uh, Ukraine. Uh, we have formal announcements. Uh, we also have people on the ground in Ukraine saying that their government just uh, changed their tune completely uh, from saying, oh, U.S. are alarmist to uh, what do we do? So we'll be right back right after this with what is happening in the world. nothing in the show should be considered legal medical or financial advice the views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion dex's opinion or anyone else who works with the show you should always do your own research and consult with professionals the internet is full of fake news so please take everything with a grain of salt if you have not already it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. All right, what is going on, guys? It is Adam A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. If you've never been here before, this is a live call-in show. Uh, we're going to have callers at 2244 marf If you have family in Ukraine, give us a call. I know that we have uh, anywhere from five to 10,000 people watching every show. So, again, if you're watching and you have somebody that is family there, uh, let us know what they're saying. Uh, again, that number is 2244 marf Now, if you're new here, just remember all of the sources here are actually bibliographed over on our website. We, and we make sure to actually back up if we show you a picture, a video, a tweet, uh, a document, an article. Anything that is there is going to be over on marfuglenews.com. And then, of course, it is very easy to navigate. You will just go to this thumbnail, the red phone uh, hotline. And, of course, once you click on that, it will bring you to every single article, tweet, video, uh, including the Too Hot for TV. Once you hit the yellow bar, that is the Too Hot for TV or essentially the stuff that's too far to one direction. Uh, once you see this uh, yellow bar right here, that's basically a trigger warning saying that... Uh, that that is the stuff that we cannot show uh, if it's copyrighted or if it is, again, pretty extreme. So that is a whole nother show there. So make sure to go check it out. Now, on top of that, today we have a ton happening uh, over in Russia. We have the White House. We have Jake Sullivan, the National Security Council, coming out and telling us uh, that they are saying uh, he wants to be crystal clear uh, they do not think they will wait until the end of the Olympics. They believe it's going to happen before the end of Olympics, and we're, we're talking about invasion of Ukraine. Uh, the forces are very, very, uh, very ominous. Now, uh, some are saying, you know, hey, President B could just stop all of this right now if he says, hey, uh, if NATO just says, hey, we're not going to accept uh, Ukraine into NATO. But they will not do that. In fact, all of the talks have fallen through. We are now at the precipice of World War III, and there's no other way to put it. People say, oh, this is the same old movie, this and that. Uh, this is not. This is a brand new sequel, and we are heading into the craziest time of our life. Uh, so again, we know people that are in Ukraine saying that uh, they were just evacuated. We have had, we, I talked to some several uh, influential people as far as they are in uh, local and upper uh, echelons of the government that watch the show, and they normally don't reach out. They did. Uh, again, this is this has gotten serious, and most of you are going to see that. All the people that you kind of uh, told over the last months and over the last years uh, that you've warned, and, and they've just thought, oh, you're one of those, or you're that crazy person. Uh, they're all going to start seeing everything playing out that you said, and they're going to go, holy crap, that person was right. 
So that it it's getting it's getting really nuts. And again, you know, not here. Uh, I guess a time will tell, right? Uh, if I'm wrong, then I have to face you guys and correct it all. So anybody that has, you know, if, oh, they're talking about all of this and it's not going to happen. We'll see how that ages. Uh, let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex. What is going on and how are you doing tonight? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I am doing just fine. Now, Dex is going to be over at 2244 marf if you want to call in. That's, again, 224400 marf uh, or 224400 Press option four when you get to our phone tree, and you will get directly to, uh, to Dex. Now, um, again, we encourage first-time callers. If you have family or friends in the military uh, that, you know, of course, if you have a piece to the puzzle – that you can tell us without getting anybody in trouble or sinking any ships, then please give us a call. So let's get straight into it. Senators say that CIA has been collecting data in bulk in a secret program. Remember, they always tell us these crazy, really bad news uh, stories on Fridays. The reason why is most of the time people are done with their work week, they're tired, they're exhausted, and then they tell us something like this, and then of course you have your barbecues, you have your fun, and you forget all about it. I mean, Dex, it's pretty much a, a solid pattern that they tell us the worst possible news ever on Fridays. Isn't that isn't that actually like kind of a rule in media? Yeah, it's it's PR 101. Absolutely. Uh, bad news on a Friday. <laughs> Good news on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest. That's why you fire people on Fridays. They they have the whole weekend to just hang out and, and uh, soak in it, right? Uh, but senators, of course, have uh, said this, and now it says that Sen Senators Ron Wyden and Mar Martha uh, Martin Heinrich said in a letter that was partly declassified Thursday that the CIA has been collecting data in bulk in a secret program. In a letter sent to the CIA Director William J. Burns and National Intelligence Director Avril D. Hines in April 2021, the Senate Intelligence Committee members called for more information on the program to be declassified. In addition to declassifying the senator's letter, the CIA also uh, on Thursday declassified a heavily redacted set of recommendations from a report on the program compiled by a watchdog. Uh, it says the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board, or PC Lob, uh, <laughs> Peace Lob, right? And then significant portions of both the letter and the recommendations were redacted. Well, couldn't see that one coming. It says Wyden and Heinrich allege in the letter that the program has operated outside the laws uh, passed and reformed by Congress, but under the authority of the Executive Order 12333, a document signed by former President Reagan in 1981 that governs intelligence community activity. Uh, I think that was around some sort of big conflict thing that they were able to pass that. Almost every law and executive orders that they've passed and kept going was actually originated at some sort of uh, tra traumatic time or after a huge massive event. Uh, in 2001, we had one. That's when the Patriot Act went through, and that's when uh, all of the Homeland Security and everything else started. So again, you, you see these things, and you don't see them being used until we find out the declassified stuff. It says the CIA has secretly conducted its own bulk program, the lawmakers wrote, with the rest of the line being redacted. It says it is done so entirely outside the statutory framework that Congress and the public believe govern this collection. And without any of the judicial, congressional, or even executive branch oversight uh, that comes with the FISA collection. Absorb that. It is completely above the law. It is under this executive order, but a completely above anything the public has access to. As far as CIA and everything else, in back in 2004, there was a, there was a program called LifeLog, uh, or one of their, I believe, one of uh, the what was it? NS, and it wasn't. I think it was CIA. It was a CIA program called LifeLog uh, that w ended in a certain year. And their whole goal with LifeLog is they wanted some sort of uh, social media platform uh, that would essentially know who people. Uh, 
you know, hang out with, who their friends are, um, what they like, what, uh, what kind of people they are, you know, kind of a, a profile of them. Uh, that again ended in one month in, in 2004. And then in 2004, just a couple months later, something called Facebook was created. So if you feel like it, you can go look and, and go down that rabbit hole. I don't know if these are related, but again, it sounds like we're going to find out more. Uh, who knows? Maybe we're going to have the floodgates opened af uh, after this whole Ukraine situation uh, gets bigger. And maybe we're going to find out a bunch of information. But remember what I am saying uh, a lot of this is going to be on the website. We have sources for all of this. So anybody that looks at us and says, oh, they're just talking out their, their you know, necks here, make sure to go check out our website. We have backed up information and we kind of try to uh, be redundant and check our work outside of the country because we know that a lot of this is being filtered through the United States and all of the culture that's going on around us. So again, make sure to check that. And then... Uh, we have China threatens U.S. with strong measures over a $100 million Taiwan arms sale. We sold Taiwan, or we're, we're selling Taiwan, $100 million worth of defense gear. And it says, China vowed this week to take legitimate and strong measures against a $100 million arms sale between the U.S. and Taiwan that it claims is a violation of its sovereignty. On Tuesday, Chinese Foreign Minister spokesman Li Zhan Zhao reacted to U.S. plans to sell the Patriot missile defense system and provide technical support for the defense systems as part of the $100 million deal over the next five years. The Patriot system is designed to intercept incoming enemy missiles, including ballistic missiles. Uh, Zhao said arms sale and Patriot system uh, support between the U.S. and Taiwan seriously violate the One China principle, which essentially says that Taiwan is still a part of it. Not every country in the world actually recognizes Taiwan as their own democratic society. Uh, in fact, some of them say that it is going to be China at some point, just like uh, Hong Kong was. Only Hong Kong had this kind of uh, deal already worked out. It was supposed to have another like 20 years on it, uh, but or another few years, and they ended up taking that back early. This is a little bit different. Taiwan believes that it is completely independent of it, and so do a lot of other countries. Other countries like Japan back up Taiwan. Now, I just want to make uh, people aware that with Russia, we see that they have surrounded Ukraine. We see that they are doing drills that also uh, essentially, you know, you have all of the, the land surrounded by the troops that we know about, satellite photos, uh, mobile hospitals, blood supplies have been transferred, all of that. That, uh, that is on land. Now they're doing drills that will put the sea and the waterways, uh, b essentially will block these waterways, major and very strategic waterways. Uh, the drills will start, I believe, on the 14th, on fa uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, that's three days away. That would be before the Olympics end. So maybe that is when they're kicking it off. Uh, Jake Sullivan, National Security Council, says uh, that, mo that somebody said it by, by Tuesday, right? So Monday is the 14th. And uh, again, wouldn't that line up exactly with what we said? Now, if there is kind of a double Fantastic Freddy going on here and, you know, they already set us up. They told us that Russia was planning to make it look like Ukraine had attacked them so they could go in uh, rightfully, right? Uh, say if Ukraine does something to them, then they can rightfully respond. This is something that's happened before in history. Uh, in Germany, they did it uh, to Poland. It was a very big thing. They they fake like, you know, dress up as the other, you know, people, videotape it or back then have witnesses see, hey, a Poland soldier did this uh, to us. And then it gets the German people really pissed. And then, of course, they go to conflict with, you know, with everybody behind it. Uh, but some think that maybe we were setting that up prehand because uh, Ukraine or the U.S. or NATO is actually going to do it. But then since they set this up, it will look like they didn't. But again, uh, if you think about it right now, what Russia has been saying is if you don't accept Ukraine into NATO, we will drop and pull back everything. Uh, but nobody is willing to agree to that. So it really sounds like it's it's uh, partly on our end. And again, everybody has their opinions. There's two sides to this story. So a lot to go over. 
But uh, I guess back to the point, Taiwan is very close. Everybody sees what is around Ukraine. Nobody sees all of the, the, the surrounding forces around Taiwan because they're already there. China has their fleets in the South China Sea. They even have, a lot of people don't know this, they have thousands of actual fishing boats that aren't actually fishing boats at all. They call them like, I believe, the Shadow Fleet or the, the Shadow Navy. And what they are is these fishing boats that are actually outfitted with uh, military uh, holes and military weapons and things like that. And they operate kind of under this protection as a fishing vessel, uh, even to the point where they even have fake nets kind of laid out. Uh, so satellite photos will look at it and say, hey, that's a fishing boat, when really it's a military Navy boat or at least uh, uh, kind of a militia type thing. They have those, but then they also have uh, a very, very close proximity to Taiwan. When they invade, it will only take them a, a few hours. I mean, like, they're 100 miles away by sea or 110, something like that. Uh, regardless, they're under 200 miles away from Taiwan. So you don't need to see this full-on lineup. In fact, China can line up their forces without us even really noticing. Uh, so th that is something to think about. What if this both happens at the same time? What if both pop off? It would make sense. They're no limits partners. They've been meeting constantly over the last few years. And of course, they have been talking a ton. Uh, again, they say they are no limits partnership now and they want to go to the moon together. They want to hold hands to the, to Mars. So some think that we are th that there is going to be some land grabs in the short future. Um, of course, this is on top of everyone saying that the world is changing and we've got eight years uh, to reverse, you know, the change. Otherwise, we're all screwed. So who knows? Maybe the world is getting desperate. Seems like uh, everybody I know is. So Jillian's Gems, thank you for your support. Kathleen Davis, salute. Thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome to the Mafia. Justin Holcomb, thank you. Uh, Holcomb, thank you so much for uh, your support tonight. Thank you for the super sticker, uh, super chat. And then Bible Talk for Common People says, don't know if this will get to you. I've been here all week and think you to be is shadow banning me because all of my super chats have slipped by you since late last week. Just wanted you to know I'm still watching. No, I, I see all of them. Um, if if it didn't show me one, then that's weird. Um, again, I'll have to check up on that. CS, thank you so much. Simply Pony, thank you as well. Simply Pony, nice to see you here tonight. Thanks for being with me for, what, three years now? Sheepdog111, thank you so much for subscribing. Core251, Anthony Vincent, much love, Adam, Dex, and fam. Thanks for all you do. And then Joseph Newhouse, looks like, before the show even started, says, made a follow-up about the unmanned Black Hawks featuring Jurassic World uh, Dominion. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for all supporting Independent. Thank you. We, you know, we, we're running this ourselves, so thank you as, as well. All right, and then, so keep that in mind. Keep Taiwan and the fact that you don't have to see, you don't have to have uh, too much warning for Taiwan. Taiwan has uh, set up the laws, and now they have set it up officially so they can legally put mines out in the water. You really uh, only put mines out before something happens because guess what? Mines can destroy things. If a cruise ship drives by or something else drives by, you don't exactly want to hit a mine. Uh, mines are very specifically usually targeted towards uh, subs. But yeah, they're doing that now. So obviously something is going on there. What do you think it is? Let me know in the comments down below. And, of course, Canadian authorities look to the courts to break the blockade. Authorities in Canada are headed out to court in, on Friday in an attempt to break the bridge blockade by the truck truckers protesting the country's restrictions as parts shortages rippled through the auto industry on both sides of the U.S.-Canadian border. Um, they say that we will see the all-time mother of all supply chain stops, and we haven't even seen it yet. We have seen kind of the stop-ups because of a lot of the stuff from China has not gotten to us. A lot of the stuff is still sitting on containers that's been there for over six months, eight months, nine months. 
Uh, that has affected, you know, current stuff, but they did have warehouses full of stuff here. And uh, a lot of these big, you know, box retailers had stuff. But when you go down to the Ma and Pa level, a lot of them were struggling to even stay open. We have lost a ton of businesses since this started two and a half years ago or two years ago in 2019. Uh, th we have lost a ton. And I mean a ton of businesses uh, because of partly the shortages, but uh, second, the chip shortages, and then, of course, everything else. So there's a, lo a lot to fight for here. Uh, this may make it uh, just as worse. Uh, just, ju uh, it might make it uh, much more worse. But again, uh, I, I know many people that either way, they'll suffer or sacrifice to support it. So we'll see what happens here. And, and again, it says the mayor of Windsor, Ontario, planned to seek an injunction at, at an afternoon hearing against members of the self-proclaimed mm, convoy uh, who have used scores of pickup trucks to bottle up the Ambassador Bridge connecting it to the city of Detroit. The standoff entered its fifth day on Friday, which most of you know they cut off funding through multiple uh, super stupid sites that uh, choose to, you know, choose to pick sides. So again, uh, there are other people filling those shoes. And then we have the Navy releases timeline for the mysterious 2019 UAS swarm involving warships off of California. Why are they releasing it now? I don't know. Uh, we were in a live show last night when someone commented this came out at that time. It was about four minutes old by the time we uh, broke uh, broke it here or at least brought it over and it says an unofficial unredacted presentation shows how an encounter with the swarm went down as well as an infrared image supposedly showing the vehicles so you know these were apparently drones around uh, one of our ships so I just want to point out right now what is happening we're potentially going to conflict with Russia, potentially going to uh, conflict with China. Uh, what if this was one of the things that triggered it? What if this was a practice run? Uh, what if an actual conflict with China uh, looks a whole lot like thousands of drones, these UAS drones uh, swarms that we already know they have the technology for? What if those are you know, going to pop in over a coastline or something like that? Now, that might sound pretty extreme, but again, we know they have the technology and we have all of these weird instances like these UAS flying above uh, warships and, of course, now uh, flying above tons of nuclear facilities. Uh, some say that some of those are attributed to potential UFO visits or whatever you want to call it. Uh, again, this is pretty serious, uh, the fact that this happened and they they hid, hid this down below. Why are they releasing it now? That's my question. Can you answer that? Uh, I would love to hear that. It says the unredacted version of the slide provides several new details, namely a timeline of interactions between the U.S. Navy's uh, Arleigh Burke class destroyer USS Paul Hamilton and several objects denoted as UAS. Now, I want to also remind you that China has set up in the desert of, the, I believe, the Gobi Desert, Dex. Uh, I know you may be on the phone, but uh, just flash the light when when you're ready to come back in. Uh, but it was in the desert. They have set up our carriers, a uh, fake mock-up of our carriers out in the desert. And <coughs> we know that they have done so in a way that they can practice 24-7 on destroying our carriers. The reason why is their targets are even on a train track so they can fix it and then put it back out, fix it and put it out. Uh, they have been training something to hit our carriers and that very well may be uh, these drone uh, swarms. In fact, those uh, those drone swarms may they may have been practicing with you know low explosives so they could you know not destroy their targets so easily, uh, but practicing how to hit them from the sky. Uh, if you if if you haven't seen that again, we can attach something, or you can just search uh, China practices uh, attacking uh, U.S. Uh, U.S. copies in the desert. And then uh, Dax is over on the phone line. Uh, we are getting callers in right now. We have Irish American Patriot <clears throat> and then National, uh, talking about the National Economic Security and Recovery Act. Uh, let's see here. Let's get uh, Irish American Patriot in. 
and it looks like uh, looks like Dex is going to be getting him in. Uh, well, you are well, you are getting in. I'll just a quick reminder. Well, we have everybody here. If you have not already, make sure to go over and check out, uh, of course, marfuglenews.com slash prep. You can go over there. There is no better than, time than yesterday. If you do want to stock up, again, there are plenty of reasons why. Uh, this way, if you do stock up through marfuglenews.com slash prep and my Patriot Supply, you can end up supporting your favorite news agency at the same time. Again, that's marfuglenews.com slash prep. You can get everything from short or long-term survival food, MREs, uh, gadgets, as far as if you need a water purifier. Again, 90% of uh, the U.S. would perish if a grid down scenario happened, not because we'd be taking each other out, uh, but because huh, we would not have potable, drinkable water. So that's a very big and key thing to have on top of food. Uh, if you can afford this, I highly recommend going over and checking out channels like Alaska Prepper. Uh, of course, there's Survival Living. There are all sorts of great prepper families uh, right here in the Marfugal family and, and friends with us that you can go check out that help you do it for cheaper. Uh, we want to make sure that if you can't afford to go through any of our affiliates, that we have some sort of option so you can still uh, hang out with the rest of us as far as keep up with it. I say food banks are a great option while well, they're still open. Again, uh, there, there's uh, plenty of things to do. I know because I was in that position many times in my life. Uh, so make sure to go over and check out our website for resources. Marfuglenews.com slash prep. Let's get our caller on. Uh, let's see here. Ira I'm here. Irish American Patriot. You are live on Marfugal News. What is going on? Hey, how's it going? I'm a just want to say that I'm a I've been here since the beginning, since before Dex and all of that. And I'm originally from Seattle, moved to Ohio. So, well, what's going on? Anyways, uh, O H. So the National National Economic and Security and Recovery Act. So, uh, my dad's best friend. They served together in the Air Force, and um, he. He knows that he remembers watching that be signed into law during um, Clinton's time, and uh, one of the last things he did before he left office, and it was supposedly supposed to be enacted during um, the week of uh, that fateful uh, day of September, and um, ironically, that happened instead. Um, he also believes that those three-letter agencies. Um, since then um, have redacted that a lot of that from being able to be seen online or anything. So essentially it's been suppressed. Um, and to about it says that they remember watching it being signed into law, but, but that's it. Like nothing ever came from it. Um, and what I'm, what I believe or my, my thoughts on this, my theory is that um, it's been suppressed this whole time. And a lot of the things going on, politically in our country have to kind of do with that. Um, for instance, uh, he and I think that, you know, Trump being, or sorry, T-Man being pushed out of office is, um, was one of the reasons because he had plans to enact that in his second term. And uh, let me, I'm trying to, trying to look over, and this is the National Economic Security and Recovery Act. Um, I guess why would he? Right. I guess how how would that play into everything? Well, see, so, so what that does is it takes a good power away from the government. Basically, you'd never have to pay federal tax again. Um, the uh, and it, I mean, if you know any history or anything, that was originally formed originally originally formed uh, during Lincoln's time, and uh, it was meant to help pay for war supplies. It was meant to be temporary. It was not meant to be permanent. Well, um, but I could, it was we paid it all these years. Well, I could see why I could see why T Man uh, T Man wouldn't want to were would want to enact that or the motive is there. Uh, he you know of course has a lot of money and that means a lot of taxes. Now don't want to get into the argument if if he paid it or how much he wrote off, but <laughs> I could see why he right. would, I could see why he would put that in there. Do you think that this ties into everything that's going on right now as far as the conflict and everything else? With, with Within, like, our own country's turmoil? Absolutely. I think it's – I think there's multiple reasons, but I think this being suppressed 
I mean, you'd have a lot of big guns to suppress something like this for as long as they have. And I definitely think that a lot of, you know, things that we've had happen, I don't know if the, um, the uh, V is part of that or not, um, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's not a reason. Um, and of course, like say, and you'll come up with a little bit, but everybody that watched, you know, Congress and stuff like that when it was televised remembers it being signed into law, but that's it. Well, uh, I don't know much about that subject. I, w- I wouldn't be able to speak on it. Dex, if you if you know more about this, I know that, uh, again, you know, I was born in 86, so I remember Clinton before, uh, of course, I, I, was, I watched him a lot. In fact, before he did all that stuff with uh, Lewinsky, I remember watching that on TV. You know, I was, a, I want to say I was a teenager uh, when all of that was going down, but I was definitely not into uh, politics at that time. I was into everything else. Uh, Dex, do you want to speak on that? I know that you, um, you are also, you also have some stuff over there that you're lining up as far as the next piece of the show. Yeah. I'm Adam. Sorry. I'm not that familiar with the, with the act. So essentially what this would do is on top of it, abolishing the, uh, IRS, um, it would also, they would basically pay people back. Um, so you'd get a check every American, who lived in this con- country would get a check from you know what their parents work on top of you know your regular job you would get a check you know every month kind of like the stimmies that they did um, throughout the country during the beat so basically you'd get something like that and that's how it would re-stim- stimulate the economy and stuff like that um, so I mean it's not just like it, it's a big deal because it would pull us sort of a rut. But like I said, it would take a lot of power away from the federal government, and those who have power are afraid to lose it. Well, and every president that has tried to enact this sense has, you know, it's just ironic that every time it's been brought up or something like that, it's it's been suppressed. Well, again, I, I personally think that that just sounds a little bit loopy, uh, but I will look into it. As far as the <laughs> idea, I don't, I don't think that they would ever let that fly and it would ever happen. Um, mods, if you can, there was uh, somebody... Uh, that needs to be corrected on on how the the system here works as far as callers go. Uh, if you guys can, please uh, let them know how that works. Um, again, well, thank you, Irish American Patriot. I appreciate it. I'll look more into it. I, of course, like I I don't know anything about it, and I'll, I I'm always honest. If I don't know anything, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I do. But the idea how right. how you I even want to bring basically up something new. I get it. No, 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 I and I'll look into it, and we'll show it on the show. Uh, after we look into it. But again, I, I think that that just sounds loopy. Like we would never see that ever. Um, I could see why they would push him out if he wanted to enact that, but I don't even think he could. Uh, there was so many smaller things that he couldn't en- enact and or bring out. Um, so I just, I, yeah. I, I don't see it, but I, again, I don't know enough to say that. Uh, thank you, Irish American Patriot for calling. I appreciate you. And, and thank again, you. don't be a stranger. Absolutely. Much love, fam. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Caller says, now you see me, now you don't. Thank you. That's that's the right way to do it. Um, again, uh, mods will let you know what, what I was talking about. And again, uh, we are always respectful of everyone here, including other creators, other YouTubers, uh, no matter who it is. All right. And then uh, Ukraine tensions. Countries tell nations to leave over Russia threat. This it's getting it's getting wilder by the minute. And most of you that just jumped in, we have already covered, uh, obviously, um, a lot here. Later on in the show, we're going to get into the real grit because right now. All of the people that have been thinking that this wasn't happening and that all the people that you told over the years that, you know, hey, this is going to happen. Look at what they're doing. I guess I'm speaking to a very specific kind of people right now. The people that have seen what I have seen. I don't think that I am uh, special whatsoever. I think that uh, most of you have seen the same stuff. And as you're watching it, like as I was watching on on uh, a certain day in January, uh, just recently, um, I, I saw it happening. I knew exactly right right when it happened what was going on, and I knew this was going to be something, right? 
Um, just like a lot of these things that have happened, I just knew. I mean, you see it lining up. You see, you follow the money. You see uh, everyone kind of turning, turning their turrets towards each other. And I don't think people can really accept the fact that we may have another world conflict. And they're going to have to. So a lot of you that have already accepted that this was going to happen, um, you know, maybe we were a little bit early. Maybe we saw it so far ahead that people were like, yeah, ha ha, it's next week and nothing's happened. But none of us knew the date. Now it looks like we actually have, I mean, pretty much a date. I mean, we're, we got a date for Tuesday for WW3 if things don't go right. This is, the, I mean, you know, we've said this is the closest we've ever been, but this isn't even close. This is it. This is it, people. We are about to go to conflict if a miracle doesn't happen. Our generation, this is history. We are living history right now. We are finally at WW3. I can't stress, like, I don't feel good at when, when, if this gets vindicated, if, if all of us get vindicated and all of us, cause we have all been saying this, right? And I mean, you in the audience, you're telling your family, you're like, look at this last year, you're telling them, Hey, we're going to conflict with Russia and China. Look at the China task force. Look at you were showing them all this stuff and they were just blah, blah, blah. They were rolling their eyes. I told my friends, I told my friends last year. And I jumped the gun on it. I said, hey, have extra supplies. Have this and have that. They all rolled their eyes and looked at me like I was crazy. At some point, it's not going to be crying wolf. For the haters that are out there look, oh, you're just trying to scare people. We're not trying to scare people. If you knew about this for the entire three years, then you are not scared right now. We were trying to prepare people mentally for this. I'm trying to prepare myself mentally for this. I have four children. This is scary as crap. So just understand, I don't want this to happen. And I don't care if, I, if I'm wrong and they magically just say, hey, they're not joining NATO and everything totally goes back down. Great. I would love to cover some positive stuff right now. But that's not what it looks like. A host of countries have urged their nationals to leave Ukraine amid warnings of a Russian invasion. The British Foreign Office said all UK nationals should leave now while commercial means are still available. The U.S. has said an invasion could come at any time, with President B warning that things could go crazy quickly. Russia has repeatedly denied any plans to invade Ukraine, despite massing more than 100,000 troops near the border. But it has begun massive military drills with neighboring Belarus, and Ukraine has ac accused Russia of blocking its access to the sea. The Kremlin says it wants to enforce red lines not uh, to make sure that its former Soviet neighbor does not join NATO. Again, this is what it all comes down to. They have talked to every single country in NATO, and they have said, hey, if you guys don't let them join NATO and you don't put any of your gear there, then we're good. We'll move back. But they're they're not they're, they're not going to do that. They want to get in their NATO. And maybe my, a, a side theory, and I don't know if I even believe myself on this one, but would be maybe they really do have an advantage right now. Maybe they have the hypersonic advantage. Maybe they, because they can hit us before we can hit them, maybe the mutually assured destruction's all messed up. I don't know. Sorry, I thought things were shaking here for a second. Maybe it was just me. But, um, sorry, I, I lost my place here. So, it, at this point, what do we do, you know? We have to follow this. Right now, it says UK Defense Secretary Ben Wallace warned his counterpart in Moscow that a Russian invasion of Ukraine would have tragic consequences for both countries. But Sergei Shogu said growing military tensions in Europe were not our fault. There are many comments down below in my videos every day saying we should just keep our nose out of it. It's not just our nose. It's, it's NATO's nose. NATO's nose, no. <laughs> NATO wants to get into Ukraine for whatever reason. I don't know what the reason is. Uh, but also, our president has had some history with that country. 
There's weird stuff going on. His son has had history with uh, with Ukraine. We don't know what the hell is going on right now. But what we do know, and who knows, maybe first strike will come from a different side than you think. Maybe that's a defensive, uh, maybe that's a defensive force surrounding Ukraine. I don't know. It's it seemed weird to me that that you know they're uh, doing all these things. They're putting in uh, surface to air missiles uh, in Moscow. They're essentially preparing to defend themselves as well. They're also preparing all of their bunkers. They're loading things into their bunkers. We know that from their government. Not just these crazy uh, Reddit, you know, threads. They have done, you know, their regular drills and prepared, but they've also uh, topped everything off. <coughs> it said, is issues travel warning for Ukraine amid Russian in fears. Remember, there's also is and mm, mm, there's three different places that would go off if they do go off at the same time. This is truly just something unheard of. And I'm hoping it doesn't happen. I really am. I'm praying. I have four children. I do not want any of this to happen. But at what what point do, do people that see this, or what what point are people going to say, okay, it's happening? And then after it does happen, they're not going to say, who oh, you know, oh, you you were right. I was wrong. They're going to be freaking out, asking us what to do. The foreign ministry on Friday, and maybe I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I like I said I'm getting more concerned about like how much do I know can I live can I can I support my four kids and my wife uh if we were just like in the woods that's a crazy thought but it's something that you got to think about or at least you should if you're being responsible and I'm very hoping that that's like five percent chance that it happens Foreign Ministry on Friday issued a travel warning for Ukraine and announced the evacuation of the families of is diplomats. I wish I could play a video that is copyrighted because there is a video out and it is it, it's it's neutral reporters, it's also independent reporters that are actually in Ukraine and they are all saying the same thing. There's ones that are not connected to, you know, Fox or CNN. They're all saying the same thing. All of a sudden overnight it changed. Ukraine has changed. They've changed their tune from like, oh, Russia's just, you know, doing this thing to, you know, what are we going to do? So, again, they, they were saying, oh, the U.S. is being an alarmist. You're not going to see those headlines anymore because now apparently they've switched sides. Now they're saying this is this is real deal. Like, are you guys going to back us up? Maybe and maybe that backs up my theory that they weren't trying to cause panic and they were legitimately trying to you know tell people like ah hey, don't worry about it same old thing to not panic uh, the Ukrainians I don't know Watcher two thank you for supporting Greg Davis the really scary part is that China will go for Taiwan at basically the same time Russia goes for Ukraine they will go all in and take our outposts Greg Davis. That's my thought. I, in fact, I think I talked to you the other day or you made a comment and I said I, I agree with you. I think it would make logical sense to take Taiwan at the same time. It would split our defenses up. Look at what is actually in NATO. Look at the countries. Some of those countries in NATO do not have the best forces. Uh, look at, go look at the actual list of forces uh, or uh, countries and you'll say, oh, well, that, oh, there's a couple good ones there, but man, these are not like, you know, you don't make action flicks about uh, about Albanian uh, the Albanian special forces or anything. So <laughs> I believe that's one of them. Project Exodus, as always, good job, guys. Hug your family. Take nothing for granted. God bless. I agree with you. Take nothing for granted. I don't take any. I, I well, I try not to. I know that I make mistakes, and I don't. If I take things for granted, I try to ad admit that I'm doing it and try to fix it. Uh, Tina M D. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Uh, thank you for supporting Independent. Finally, finally caught another live show. Says Stereo Oretz. Stereo Tourette's. Uh, that's funny. Uh, great job, Adam and Dex. You guys rock. M for the mods. And finally, Fugle Fam, you are the best. God bless you all. Uh, Jillian Gems, thank you guys. Thank you over on D Live. Lots of support over there. Thank you, everybody. King five five eight three. Gone girl. Triple seven. Thank you. 
Uh, bless you. Thank you so much. Gone Girl just dropped a ninjet. That is incredible. Thank you. Says, hello, Fugle family. I'm listening. Busy packing things. Just want to say I love you all. Scary times. Gone Girl, uh, some some people probably should meditate and, uh, of, you know, some people may want to tune out, actually. Um, it's all it's up to everybody individually whether you want to hear this information. I don't understand that the haters because it's like you choose to listen to me or anybody else. It's your choice. Like you can follow other things. But I, I have a feeling that in the back of your head you're thinking the same thing. Maybe just maybe you want to just switch places or something. I don't know. Truth wins. Thank you, Chicky R. I'm on a twenty two month streak. Love from Maryland. Hey, bless you, Chicky R, and thank you everybody that has had streaks like that. Again, a lot of people have been with the D-Live crew since the beginning. Uh, I'll get to the rest of you here in just a second. Moxie71, King, uh, J-Girl, that's me. Thank you. B-52 bombers return to Europe at a very tense time. The pre-planned task force deployment coincides with major moves by NATO in the face of possible Russian invasion of Ukraine. Now, I also want to point out the the comments on the last video I did on news. Within four hours, that video was at 50,000 views. It wasn't showing public for whatever reason. It was showing like 13,000 when it was at 50. I think it's at 60 or 70 or something, but it's now showing 50 or 40. Either way, it's like they didn't want that to, to just take off, right? The comments on that video are very concerning because you see people from all over the country saying that their uh, local bases and everything else are just going nuts right now. The last 72 hours, everyone has seen it. So you don't have to believe me. Go down to the comments and see hundreds of people saying, hey, I." there was a woman, I pinned her comment. She lives uh, in Oak Harbor in Washington. In fact, uh, I should have credited her, Dex. Um, there was a woman on that last video lived in Oak Harbor, lived in Colorado by five different bases, right next to NORAD, everything else. Uh, she said that she has seen more tra traffic, air traffic, uh, jets, planes, Chinooks, all that kind of stuff uh, in the last 72 hours than she did the whole time living in the middle of five bases in Colorado, which Colorado is the, one of the most active places out there because that's where NORAD is. That's where everything is. So... That says something. And then when you go down to the responses to that post, everybody is saying the same thing. Then you go post after post after post. Tons of comments saying the same exact thing all over the country. Are people going to start waking up? I don't know. So, and notice how they said this. They, they worded it, the pre-planned. So this was already in the books, right? Don't worry about it. It was pre-planned. Uh, task force deployment coincides with major moves by NATO. You could probably take a guess what that that's about. Uh, Dex, before we talk about the the more deployments now, uh, there have been breaking uh, breaking uh, new announcements of more deployments just today. Uh, Dex, do you want to get our next caller on? Uh, it looks like we have. It looks like we have uh, Bob, and an old Marine, former Marine. Uh, well, I guess you would say, yes, former Marine, uh, who called about uh, ships prior. So Yeah, he's the one who called us before. This is, uh, he's an old, he likes to be called an old Marine. They're not former or ex. So, uh, but yeah, I will get in Bob on the line just a second. I know exactly. And he's got some new information. Okay, so he, just, to, just to add in before Bob gets on the phone, he called in and he said, what you need to look out for is the pre-positioning uh, team it's it, or the pre-positioning force and it's these humongous cargo ships they're specially made they have 150 foot uh, ramp, uh, ramps on the end of them they're like cargo ships only they store everything inside he said watch out for those ships when we check those ships we found more deployments by uh, public deployments in the last three days when we at the time of doing that a couple weeks ago and all of them were heading out these were all the the ships that uh, can support a whole battalion for 30 days straight. Those all deployed. Uh, Bob, are you there? Yes, I am. 
Okay, so what what's going on? What do you got for us tonight? Well, one of the pictures that you uh, you and your partner in crime uh, took or got a hold of, the one out of uh, San Diego, that equipment that was on the ramp or on the tarmac was um, actually Army equipment. So, because the Marine Corps doesn't have, uh, I've never known them to have Bradleys. We have Amtraks and a few other things but we don't have Bradley's. So that was army equipment probably coming out of the California base going one to the middle East or to possibly Europe. I would assume. Now, can you just but, tell me what, what, what are you referencing? You're referencing a, a, a something you saw here. Yeah. When you guys did the research that you got, that the two of you did, you and Dex, um, it was the picture of the tan equipment in San Diego getting oh. loaded on a, a back of a ship. Yes, 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 yes. The piece, the piece of equipment that was sitting on the ramp is a Bradley. The other piece that was in the same picture is an M88, which is a recovery vehicle for a tank. And then the rest of the equipment was some lighter equipment, basically Hummers and the new form of them. And then you had Abrams tanks sitting there. Marine Corps has Abrams, but with the Bradleys sitting there like they were with the Abrams, that was Army equipment. And you can also tell the difference in the Army equipment. Yep, that's the picture right there that you're scrolling on. The Marine Corps doesn't, as far as I know, still doesn't do it. But the, um, the unit name or the number on the back of the equipment. All we have ever done is put a serial number in USMC, and it's usually on the side or on the top. But in the golf, we put like the, an, up, an upside down V. That equipment you see right there, that's a Bradley going up there on the ramp. And if you see green splotches on the back of it, that's usually a unit de designation number of where who, own, who the equipment goes to. So that's all army equipment. Wow. And these are some incredible pieces of, of army tech. Yeah, that's a Bradley right there. That's not a Marine Corps piece of equipment that you're pull, pulling up there. That's a Bradley. And I'm pretty sure that the thing on the, it would be on your left-hand side, is probably something to do with tow missiles, maybe. Yeah, that might be a toll system, and the plating on it is looks like mountings for applicable armor, which is explosive armor, which is um, basically a, a defense thing. I mean, everybody has it now. Back in the early 90s, we started doing it, or in the late 80s, I should say. But all that special plates right there and all those funny mounts, that's for uh, applicable armor. So that is basically getting sent overseas and the vehicle that you have that is on that picture to your you still there bob did we lose? yeah okay yeah, i'm just looking at the picture that you're doing the 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 picture that is on your right hand side upper right hand side that's an abrams and the p other picture that you have on your upper right-hand corner has got an M88 in it. And that's a recovery vehicle for that Abrams. And it can recover the Bradley, too, but it's mostly meant for the oh, Abrams. Oh, I see. That vehicle that you can barely sit up top of. If you s scroll a little bit back, you can say, I believe on top of that arm, you'll start seeing wording that probably says something to the point of the capacity of the lift and the inspection date yeah that is uh that was inspected a year ago that's probably coming out of uh might have come out of 29 palms or an army depot but you see the serial number up front and in the back there probably be a, a unit designation number I can actually see the on the Bradley in the same 
pitcher, the unit that it that Bradley belongs to, it's a H H something number. That's what uh, that's what those numbers are there for. That's a unit designation number. Okay. Like if you ever see a reserve unit for the Army, you see the H HHC two hundred two. Yes. That's probably an Army unit. That is an Army. That is possibly an Army unit if I'm reading that correctly. Um, now that is probably an Army unit because the, the Marine Corps doesn't doesn't do that at all. So can we you have can you explain why thing. can you explain to people that don't know like myself why I guess what would be the difference and then uh, also you have other information as well today I I believe. Yeah, um, why the Army does that is because um, well the Army's bigger than the Marine Corps of course. Uh, we might be the oldest per se, but we're the smallest force. They um, that helps them designate in uh, with their optics, so they don't have friendly fire when they're in combat. That's like in uh, ninety ninety one. Why we put the why we had them upward down upside down V's on our vehicles was to prevent friendly fire incidents, even though they did technically happen but that's what that they know where these unit designations are and they if they see those unit designations they know not to fire upon them that they're basically friendly so Bob, or part of their unit so now that you see yeah. this we talked to you before we found all this uh do, do you believe that these are headed out um a lot of people have said uh, they'll say something, you know, I guess I thought the first thing was, you know, why aren't these painted uh, gray or why are they painted the way they are? And then uh, do you think that these are being deployed right now to go over and fight with Russia? Well, I've heard something and I've heard it through a different thing. And I, his website's Monkey Works. He, I believe he's ex-Air Force. There's a lot of a lot of equipment heading to the Middle East right now in certain places. I would not be surprised if that's a pre-stage area too right now. Yeah, but the simple fact those two countries that believe it or not those MPF ships or the MPF ships, excuse how I say that, um, they have when they send certain units, they have the capability of basically setting up a, a spray like a spray booth with human beings, like with sp I, not cans of spray paint, but you know, like an automotive thing to where they can run those vehicles right through. We did it during the golf. We, we changed from green vehicles to that desert cam in how I think uh, M60 tank took under an hour. So you could easily do that so fast. It ain't funny. And it's quick drying flat flat paint that is uh, radar absorbing or something, and they have that on those ships. So if they need to go back to green, they can do it quick. So, and you, so I'm going to reference uh, Dex's piece of information here. It says you know about three. Uh, you know about three, three units. Marine Corps units. Three more Marine Corps units that pulled out of the United States to head to uh, uh, the Far East to a certain place. So we have a pretty sizable base that us older Marines call the Rock. And you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's fine. But a lot of us, we called it the Rock for a reason because it's out in the middle of the ocean. And it's got a lot of hysterical um, prevalence. They sent um, units from Cal, uh, North Carolina, and down in Texas. And they're all to do with, we used to, in my time, used to call them cannon cockers. But they're to do with missiles, too, now. And that is what was sent that way. So they're staging equipment and they're staging personnel in the Far East also. So it wouldn't surprise me that 
they are watching the C word pretty well to wonder if they're going to play with the other place. I want to I want to point out something that's pretty alarming here. Uh, this is I and I don't know the user here, but it says U.S. officials expect the invasion of Ukraine to begin the following way: intense aerial campaign, constant artillery barrages. The third one is really what gets me: long-term electronic warfare attacks. Yep. What well, What would a long-term electronic yep. warfare attack be to you? Well, your EM. EMPs, I believe it is called, and they'll go after the cyber side. So if you take down the internet and the power to it, you're going to uh, screw up a lot of stuff. That's why you look years ago, we had, we were not, the U.S. military was not part of the internet back years ago. We had our own form of it. If we still have that capability, it could be interesting. But who knows nowadays how they do stuff. But, yeah, it that would be your electronic warfare to a point would be the ability to basically talk to your commanders and so on and so forth. And it looks like, from what I'm seeing right now, a lot of reconnaissance equipment, and I won't say what they are, and this I got this information from uh, – a former Air Force guy that watches the flights and he knows what the equipment is, has been mapping that area out hard. And that's telling me that they have a plan no. to combat anything over Dex, there. Dex, They're right. looking at that bad. Okay, uh, Bob, I'm going to have Dex pop in here for a second. Uh, Dex, do you have any questions for Bob? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute my mic here for a second. I'm going to fix. Uh, I'm, I'm losing a light here over here, so... Uh, Dex, oh, if you can pop in, and then I'm going to pull up. Uh, I'm going to pull. Uh, by the way, a lot of the the stuff that is happening right now uh, on Twitter, the the pulse of all of this is. This is unlike anything we've seen before. This is history in the making, people. Uh, Dex. Yeah, Adam. Thank you, and 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 Bob. Thanks again for calling in with um with your oh, insight no and knowledge. Um, about some of the ships we've seen go out, do do you concur with some of the findings that we found that it looks like you know they're sending out the right types of ships to start supporting, you know, um, conflict in other areas? Yeah, I'm I'm looking at it, and I, you know, from life's experience, and you know, if you get insight to anybody that is around Pendleton or that lives in Oceanside. San Diego is so-so because it's such a large place, but Oceanside, California, around your military bases, see if the families are watching their loved ones get deployed, especially out of Pendleton, because that's the home base of the 1st Marine Division and Camp Lejeune out of North, near, excuse me, North Carolina is the 2nd Marine Division. And when those divisions pull out, you you got something going on. You know, normal exercises, you'll have attachments and different things happen for different exercises, but you won't have that base clear off. And if those ba two bases are clearing off, you got something going on. I've, I've got personally going on seen, fast. Bob, I've personally seen, um, in what little time I had to look at the flight radars, I've personally seen multiple... Uh, C-17s taken off out of the Carolinas, headed into uh, the UK, obviously probably for refueling, and then taking, then carrying on into like Poland area or other parts of Europe. Um, that that would probably be what you're describing, right? Is it is coming seeing, out? Of the, seeing those ships, it it's definitely out coming of out of the Carolinas. Well, if it's coming out of Cherry Point, that's a Marine Corps base. Cherry Point, North Carolina, is a Marine Corps air wing base. Yeah, I've, I've just seen new, yeah. there's a ton of these C-17s that just keep going back and forth in and out of Poland and in and out of uh, Romania and other locations. I've I have it up them. on they just, screen, They go Dex. in, they land, they leave, they come back. It's just like a, a never-ending route of planes flying in there. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're dropping, dropping, going, dropping, going, dropping, going. 
that wouldn't surprise me a bit. I, you know, honestly, and this is just my opinion, and going being in years ago, wearing the shoes of one of these people that are getting sent into a new place, I'll just say it that way, um, how quick the rapid deployments happen, because I've been involved in two of them. You have to take into account, normally they lock down the base. You are, you are, set on, you are you're staying at your unit, you get your stuff, you pack it, you go through inspections. You, bought, you usually have a, f a few hours, and then one, you get to see your family for a little bit if you have family there, but usually you're took into an Air Force base or on a ship and you've flown or sent out on a ship. That's my experience personally. But, you know, has it changed? Maybe. But that was, you know, my experiences were 30 years ago. But what I'm seeing is alarming me to a point. I'm hoping it's not what it, I see. But if they're already pre-staging certain units, like I say, the cannon cockers, the older Marines are going to know what that is. I mean, and these guys handle the missile systems now too. So if they're if they're already you're you know, uh, Adam had pulled up a thing about Patriot missiles being sold to um, tire or the T word. I wouldn't be surprised if those units that are all sitting in, in that place over there, they ain't that far away. I wouldn't be surprised if they're training and you know, showing these people how to operate these systems. And if we don't already have a bunch of them over there as it is, I wouldn't be surprised. Let, let me ask you this, Bob. Could the Patriot missiles, if we place them in Taiwan, even just regardless of the hundred million, <clears throat> could that defend the U S or could that, is that in between us and the U S or does that even make sense? Could it, cause they're, they're very close to China. If we had the Patriot missile system very close to China, could that actually help protect us? Well, or it would different help, kinds it of would, missiles. It would, well, this way, the Patriot missiles can mess with their missile systems, but Patriots also take down aircraft if they're done if it's done right. And I can say this from my life's experience because I know certain things of how bases and how areas are set up. Do you have enough ordnance in this country, in the U.S. military, to probably take the state of California and put it in the ocean? Okay. There's bases where there's a lot of equipment. Even though we've been through basically a proxy conflict for the last 20 years over in the sandboxes, I'm betting a lot of stuff is already pre-staged. And I wouldn't be surprised... If the country that is below the Q, the IQ country, called they start with a K and is in between S and A, the place where I went to, we have ba we have a base there. I wouldn't be surprised if that base is packed as a pre-stage. I wouldn't be surprised at all. Well, Bob, we're we're out of time here, but um, I want to thank you for calling in again, and uh, thank you for explaining. In fact, Bob, can we contact you if uh, if we just need some basic information about, say, if we uh, if we get a video about, uh, you know, if we get a viewer video of of tanks or something that maybe you can help identify it for us? Yeah, I'd be I'd be more than glad to. I that's one thing. I mean, my family. From my grandfather's up, I mean, I lost two uncles in World War II, okay? I had an uncle in Korea. I had brothers in Vietnam. So it's kind of uh, the history of combat, basically, or service goes on my family strong. So, yeah, if you, if you, guys, if you and Dex need help identifying something, please do. Please give me a call. And I saw a couple pictures to Dex of some of that artwork I was talking to you about you and him talk and you figure out which one you'd like and I'll get it out to Washington state or I can send it down to where he is. I will Bob. And thank you. And in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a call personally. Okay. I appreciate that. 
Okay. All, All right. And then we'll, we'll right. show it on air. Thank you so much, Bob. You have a wonderful night. Be safe, be prepared, and mark out. Uh, Bob makes uh, these pieces that look, uh, one of them is a, a, a soldier kneeling on wood, and then he also makes one, uh, he makes these really cool wood pieces, paints them red, white, and blue, uh, and then, of course, um, he gives them away to the veterans. He's he's just an awesome guy. That's why I said I, I, I do appreciate uh, callers like Bob, and he's easy to listen to, so if there is something that, if there is any reason why we can use Bob, I would love for Bob to come back on. Um, and then Tina MD, thank you. Stereo O Rats, uh, thank you as well. Stephen McMahon says, it was announced a week ago that I went, ran to the store, uh, would have nuclear capability in a month, is, won't accept, and will attack them. So, uh, again, another crazy thing as far as our president uh, undoing some of these sanctions. I don't understand it. Bible Talk for Common People says, Pray for our soldiers and this time for our citizens too. After the last two years of what our governments have done to us, I have no in them because they are evil as Russia. Just so you know, Bible Talk, I would watch uh, that you say that after uh, learning about what they're doing right now, that, that uh, bulletin that just went out. What you just said right there uh, puts a thing right on your back. Uh, they, basically, we need to start... Um, everybody needs to start thinking about a lot right now. Something is going on that is way bigger than anything we've even covered here. Deb Taylor, thank you. Uh, Matthew 24 6 KJV and sh ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars see that ye not be troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet I agree with you and then Bible talk for common people you don't have to you could do a, a dollar thank you for your support thank you I appreciate that they will know war is a definite by Monday but at least by next weekend Better get stocked up in case we are put out of commission by a cyber attack or other things. Trust in Jesus. Uh, I've done two videos on this today. Bible Talk, I will have to check out your videos again. Um, that's another big concern. You saw that tweet. A lot of people are concerned about them knocking down our cell phone service, our GPS, our internet, disconnecting us from the uh, Euro European side with special submarines meant to cut our connections, our, our hardline connections. So, it says, of course, WW3 is here. They already started the collapse. Please use your own discernment. All presidents serve the established. Trust Jesus today. Brenda Loritz, hey, Mar Dex fam, back pain, the worst tonight. Happy Valentine's early. Brenda, I'm praying for you. Uh, may your back be healed. I I really mean that. Amen. Um, Hayes White, thank you for subscribing. Mysteries Mystery School, again, thank you for thank you for thinking of the mods. Again, drop an M in the chat for the mods. All right, I'm gonna do a, a poll here. I know we've got f f close to six thousand with uh, well over six thousand with D Live watching. Um, let's. Let's go to the chat I'm going to show. It, this actually shows uh, both DLive and YouTube. Uh, let's turn this on. One or two or a custom answer. Do you think uh, Russia will be invading Ukraine by Tuesday? One for yes, two for no. One for yes, two for no. <clears throat> and and uh, we'll have the answers here for you in just a second. Of that survey, uh, let's see here. And then 3,000 more paratroopers head to Europe amid White House warnings of the Ukraine invasion. Now, we also had uh, the Russian military. There were certain sources in the Russian military saying that the, the part that was more official was that Russian military was saying uh, that they that they got word down from Putin that he had decided to invade. Now, we haven't heard that directly from Putin's mouth. 
So I am taking that with a grain of salt. That very may, may well be the setup for the start of this whole thing. That could be the Fantastic Freddy. Uh, by the way, lots of everybody's, there's a lot of twos actually. A lot of people say, uh, think that it's not. So, wow, I'm actually surprised. What I, I think is weird is how, and if you li listen to the video, if you haven't seen the Marfugal News video, how Jake Sullivan, Dex, can can we pull up Jake Sullivan's part about the, to be clear, and about before the Olympics ends? Because a lot, of, he, Jake Sullivan even said that a lot of people think that it's going to happen after the Olympics. And then he he basically he doubled down on it and he said i want to be clear crystal clear that I, we believe it's going to happen before the end of the olympics they said it multiple ways too they said before the olympics uh, ends why would they do that dex do you have a thought on that as far as why he triple clarified uh that it, it would happen before the olympics ends well, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know what I can say that's going through his head, other than you know, if there is any type of uh, of action that's being taken that we've talked about from like a double uh, Fantastic Freddy perspective, then somebody on one side knows when it's going to happen, right? So it's easy for them to make such a prediction. I think there's other thoughts that you know say like if there is going to be you know, sort of a, a, a one-two punch on the world, meaning Ukraine followed by Taiwan, then you're not going to see um, anything happen in Taiwan during the uh, Chinese New Year. You're not going to see it during the Olympics, which they're trying to put on a, a good, you know, bright smile and a happy face for the world, which they're not necessarily doing a great job to some people's opinions. So, um, you know, so that would sort of say that if you were going to do that and, and, as a plan to do that afterwards, then maybe there's a a reason for the the one of the one two punch to happen before. Um, is is my only thought on that. Well, we'll see. I guess you know time is going to tell on a lot of this. Um, we'll we'll see who who in there is right. I'd be interested to walk that watch that part back of everybody kind of stating. Uh, uh, their guess if it's going to be by Tuesday, which is, uh, again, before the Olympics ends and uh, before, uh, basically at, right out f uh, when this drill starts. Because Russia is setting up their, their naval uh, positioning. They've already set up their physical land positioning, uh, but now they are saying that they will be placing their ships. So we'll we'll see how this goes. Just to reiterate, we covered this on Marfugal News. 3,000 members of the 82nd Airborne Division would join 3,000 troops already mobilized uh, to Poland, Germany, and Romania. Now, just to add into this, missile-laden F-16s head to Romania amid fears of imminent war in Ukraine. Now, they, they keep using the words imminent. Because it's imminent. It's going to happen, we just don't know when and if we are going to stick our nose in it, if we are going to continue to let them into NATO, if uh, if if this doesn't just backtrack the second it starts, will there be one massive attack that the world will remember forever? I mean, it seems like something is being set up, like, you know, is it going to be uh, something goes off here and takes millions of people out or something and then everybody uses the red phone? Hence, the red phone, which if you don't know the reference on the uh, thumbnail, the red phone is, uh, a, and I, I don't know if they, did they call it the red phone or did they call it the hotline? They called it both, right? Is essentially the direct connection between U.S. and Russia after the Russian missile crisis or the Cuban missile crisis, right? That's correct. So, you know, will they use that after some massive event and then everything's going to go back to, to, you know, the new normal? I don't know. 
but it does say uh, that now they have, and we're not talking to these tiny missiles here. Look at the size of those uh, those jets there and those those missiles on the side. These those missiles on the the white tips, uh, that was what Raytheon. Those are as big as cars. Uh, that's what Raytheon has been producing for two years. I told you guys two years ago. There's something up. Uh, they used eminent domain to grab all of the night vision goggles, uh, the tubes that that are put in these things. Uh, they were drilling in urban environments. They have been practicing at night with night vision goggles. They just bought everybody night vision. They just bought silencers for a ton of our Marines I, or Army. I don't know which, but they've got uh, over dozens of thousands of, uh, if not hundreds of thousands of silencers for our for our uh, soldiers, what do they need those for? Urban environments echoing can really damage their ears. Uh, they know it would help in, of course, uh, some of the previous battles we've already been in, where they're in in towns and. But again, I I think that's partly because uh, they're going to be in close quarters in in cities. Maybe I don't know. Hopefully just not our cities, right? Why do you think they're drilling underground? Why do you think that for the last, you know, three, four years, they have made separate uh, separate training at every base has been doing these underground and in the dark training? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, before we move on, I do want to remind you, if you do want to protect yourself against an EMP, if you want to protect your engines, uh, your house, your generator, your solar generator, again, you can actually go through energy and get one of the EMP equipped uh, solar generators. They actually have a partnership. Again, go over. Uh, again, check out marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Uh, this is a device that can actually ground the signal before it fries your device. And by it, I mean an EMP of any uh, phase, E1, E2, and E3, or uh, Carrington Level Plus event. If you have a solar flare up to 228,000 amps, this can protect it. Uh, again, this is uh, many different devices for many different things, but essentially anything you want to protect, they make a device for. EMP Shield is the same company that works uh, with agencies like DHS, DOD, and now on the Demso team. If you remember, T-Man signed in an emergency order or executive order uh, to try to help protect our grid. They saw something coming then. Uh, they put out in a warning. The De Department of Homeland Security put out a bulletin essentially telling every American to have six months to a year of food. I wonder what they had in their foresight then. Again, marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Uh, the car version, which is is definitely the easiest to put in and that you can do yourself, uh, that one takes only a few minutes to put in your car. Takes about 10 minutes on average. Uh, if you have a, a side post, I believe uh, Bones or Mod actually did a video on how to do that. He had a, a unique situation. Uh, you can use his video as reference. marfuglenews.com slash EMP. Uh, so why you would go through the, us, one, it would help our channel. Uh, you get $50 off. And again, you're supporting your favorite uh, your favorite channel. So uh, we, again, very, very thankful for anyone who buys from our affiliates. Not everybody needs EMP stuff. A lot of the people think that, you know, that just everybody's going to run out and get EMP protection or survival food. Again, we appreciate those of you that end up doing this through us. Most of you already have your stuff settled. Most of you that are here are here because you're already into this. And again, so it is helpful when people go through us. Uh, that, that way we can get a commission off of it and support our families. Uh, Dex is included. Um, okay, and then Dex. Let's get our next caller on. Uh, thank you, Jeanette Botha, Survival Stew. I appreciate your support. And thank you for all the new subscribers. Uh, 12 minutes ago, Jasmine Vermeer. All right, Dex. Let's uh, let's see here. And Adam Starseed One is live. All right, Starseed One, you are live on Marfugal News. Hey man, it took you long enough, man. I, I'm on the road now, but uh, uh, what's that saying goes? Uh, uh, wars and rumors of wars. Don't let that trouble your heart because these things must 
come to pass. And that is because this place, this uh, what I call kingdom, the Bible calls a kingdom, it's uh, the planet or reality belong to the beast system. And this is where Jesus or the man you guys call, or the Christians call Jesus, I don't call him Jesus, but this is where Jesus said, be in this world, but not of it. Of it means religion and politics. Get out of her. Get out of that system. Enjoy the planet. Enjoy the earth. Enjoy this beautiful place. We came here to enjoy the planet, the waterfalls, the oceans, the mountains, the beauty of it. But we tend to get indoctrinated into religion and politics, and we get caught up in all this. I the guess it's, it's all personal choice. The, I guess it's all, all personal the, choice. Hello? The, the what? It's, uh, I guess it's all personal choice, Starseed. Uh, you have you have yes, two. It is just to keep us on track here. But, you okay. you have two photos here, uh, Starseed. <laughs> Can we uh, go over okay, your photos? Yeah. Let, let's get into let's get into those photos, okay? Now, uh, when when you read your Bible, it says when the abomination of desolation stands in the holy place. Okay, back in the days, the holy place was a temple. It could be a government office, a library, uh, whatever. It's a holy place because they're bu- they were built like temples. So when the abomination of desolation stands in the holy place, it doesn't mean a human being is going to stand there. It means something will be standing up there. A statue, a sculpture. And what does that sculpture look like? It's a sphere. And it says that when this abomination of desolation stands in the holy place, know that summer is nigh. Know that summer is close. Know that Sumeria is close. And those are symbols for the elites to uh, start building your bunkers, start building your... Well, this is actually so. Where, and again, where is this sphere? This is a very creepy image, by the way. So, do you guys yeah, notice sphere, what this is? It's a broken sphere, sphere. Statue is in the Vatican, and in the uh, there's one in the uh, the United Nations. It almost looks like there's uh, structures in, like the the Earth has been cracked open, and underneath there's this it, whole structure. Yes. It's a sphere within a sphere. Ezekiel's wheel describes it. Yeah. This is probably what Ezekiel saw. So why would this be at the UN and the... And the, the uh, I'll, I'll pull up the other it, photo it, as well. <laughs> yes. Well, it's a symbol. It's to let no, let the elites know that, uh, okay, it's uh, it's getting closer, and we need to start getting ready for this thing. Oh, weird. It's a different one, but it's the same. And and if you look at it, they look a little different, but they're, they're, they look the same. But if this, this thing is made out of metal, okay, if this thing goes, it, it's got a, 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 a path that it's been doing it for years. For wow. millions of years and it's never moved this path because it's strong it does not nothing nothing pushes it out of orbit it's destroyed everything uh, I mean what do you think about moonfall and, and movies like that I haven't seen it yet because it's only in theaters but well, I, I, you know I haven't seen the movie but I saw a preview of it and that's something I gotta check out because uh, it's you know they try to sneak in things here and there to 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 you know. That's what I'm saying. Uh, what a predictive programming and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. As far as like, uh, I I just thought of that in you know all this uh, the, the uh, don't look up movie and all of these weird kind of uh, yeah predictive programming I watched, type you know things. What I watched I watched that movie maybe four or five times just to catch little things that they throw in there because uh, you you got to be in there to you know to catch these little hints they give I, you. I watched it but, the uh, same. What it what did you catch anything that I didn't already talk about? 
Um, no, pretty much the same thing you 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 talked about. I I don't know if you noticed, but they had in the very beginning when she's at her computer, uh, they show Elon Musk's uh, meme of an asteroid destroying Earth and going through it. Um, I I thought that was pretty odd especially the timing of what they were doing Uh lined up with a lot of stuff that was happening with with actual celebrities and uh, that Adam McKay for anybody that's new here uh, the movie Don't Look Up on Netflix Adam McKay the director he actually normally is most well known for his based on real events movies and even in his trailer he said based on real events that haven't happened and then dot 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 yet it's very creepy. And then they had a real relationship with Dart, which Dart is headed out towards Didymos. I mean, what if that's real, you know? I don't know. It freaks me you know out. What I, you know what I find? I find you, you know the ending part where they... I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, this is a spoiler alert, so I don't know. If people haven't watched this movie, uh, I'm about to spoil it. But uh, you know the ending when they, when they get all these old people that leave the... Uh, uh, they're leaving the Earth? Yeah. Um, they, yeah, they they come off this 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 thing off space. That thing in space is the ultimate bunker for the for the super elite rich. Not even government people. Government people are gonna hide under their mountains and the in the, their bunkers. But the super rich elites are gonna be in space. What they're building now, which they're calling it a a hotel or a resort or I don't know what they're building up there, but that is the ultimate bunker. Yeah, China is by uh, building, they they say, a miles-long structure, and they're going to have it done in just a couple of years. Why do they need it so fast? That is the ultimate bunker. That's for the super, super-duper rich elites to hide in. But that's, that's people that are... Uh, attached to their possessions you know those are the people that the bible says that they will will run and hide in their bunkers because they're afraid of the son of man but those that are not afraid of the son of man they will stand up to them they will stand up to the son as in son as in the son of man because that star that warms us up every morning that is the son of man so if the sun has something planned for us, the, the human body has a very sad story on this, in this kingdom, in this planet. It's, it wasn't meant to be here. When they talk about tribulations, that's, that's if you break down the word, with the word tribulations, it means three bulls. One bull took out the dinosaurs. Second bull was the, the, the flood. And we're down to our last and final bull. A bull is a destructive animal. Which they actually had uh, the Wall Street bull at the end of Don't Look Up floating in the sky. Another thing that, yes. I, another thing that I, I caught. Uh, uh, I did. Well, the, I didn't yes. watch. By the way, a lot of people didn't watch the very, very, very end after the credits. They get to another planet. I don't know if, did you watch that far? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I watched the whole thing all okay. the way to the don't, end. Don't, where, we won't, we won't, uh, we won't there, spoil there, 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 it. Don't spoil it. There was a survivor on Earth. Well, I, well, you know what? I'll have to rewatch that again. But uh, we, we're run, running out of time. But I did want to say somebody, uh, somebody said they fell asleep bef- uh, during that movie. You do have to watch the very end of that movie, uh, especially the yeah, last it's, twenty minutes. It's, good. it's it's very. It gives you a. It's, yes. Yeah, it was the ending was done probably the best out of all of it. Uh but we are out of time star yeah. seed. Uh again, I appreciate your call and I and don't be a stranger. I know uh this is not your first call. I don't want it to be your last, okay? This is my second time calling you guys, man. Hey, I love your show, man, but people need to wake up way faster. You need to actually shake people and say, "You know what? That's it. We are th- this is it. This is it." <laughs> because uh People are waking up way too slow. Well, too and slow. you you shake them too fast and they call you names. But yeah, at this point, I, yeah. I'm not afraid of it. <laughs> yep. Um, which, by the way, uh, they just said, uh, Ali Baker just commented, just seen on Twitter that they are evacuating the U.S. Embassy in Ukraine now. 
So that, maybe that says something. Um, I don't know if that's – I know yeah. they announced it, but maybe if they're physically doing that, maybe that is a sign of things to come. Starseed, thank you so much for your call. And, again, thank you uh, uh, thank you for being a part of the Fugle fam. I appreciate you. And have a wonderful night. Uh, you too, man. Take care, guys. All right. Have a wonderful night. Um, you guys know um, anybody that watches Alaska Prepper – he sound uh starseed sounds a lot like alaska prepper has the same just uh i don't know a positive alaska prepper has just this really great um i don't i it's a certain cadence i mean it's a cadence of how they talk and how he speaks um i just i like listening to uh alaska prepper like i could if once i tune in i tune in for a while he is such a nice guy. If you guys have not checked out Alaska Prepper, uh, by the way, make sure to go over and say hi from the Marfugal family. He has done so much for the community. He's an amazing person. Uh, he's literally an inspiration to a lot of people. Uh, make sure to go show him some love. And uh, again, uh, that's awesome guy. Uh, Bible Talk for Common People says, I encourage everyone to accept Jesus and his forgiveness and salvation. Jesus is not a myth, and the Bible has not been proven wrong, but it has been proven right over and over. Jesus died in our place. Thank you for your support, Bible Talk for Common People. Um, again, I will have to check out that video that you did on uh, on the uh, the two subjects there. And then Serafina, Greg Davis, the movie Greenland will give you chills. Watch it. Oh, Greg, I, I waited. I watched it before... Uh, before it came out, I mean, we we had Fugle Fam members getting it on uh, on like when it released. We got it legally because it released in like I want to say Germany or Poland or something, and then we got that on DVD. Somebody burnt a, a copy. Who burnt that copy? I can't remember. Somebody burnt me a disc and they sent it to me, and that was really cool. It was like 720p, but it was awesome. Uh, but anyways. Uh, that movie definitely another one that's like it's right kind of in your face very uh spooky to say the least uh let's see here and then i do want to make sure uh, a couple times i've missed a few people like machina opus i believe i missed you last time and then uh let's see here uh ali baker thank you so much for your support tonight god's child much love thank you so much for supporting us uh, I don't believe I've seen uh, uh, seen you do that before, so thank you so much. Uh, Don Bali, again, thanks for uh, two days in a row stopping by. Anna McLean says, thank you for this information, praying for our country and our world. Uh, Ginny Bell Morales, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Um, Dex, EMP Shield actually popped in, and I did not see them. Uh, Andrew, and I hope you're still here. If you guys don't know this, EMP Shield, uh, the people that work there are part of our community like literally part of our community uh they are they are preppers themselves uh the founders they ne never knew that their company was going to be as big as it was uh they never knew that still they would be, they they are still so yeah they never they didn't know they were going to be as big as they are now now they're a massive you know this huge uh company but they still have this small uh main staff andrew is one of them and andrew personally supports Andrew also personally does his own YouTube channel. Never asks, you know, for anything. He never says like, "Hey, shout out" or anything like that. Um, so again, and then Dex, can we make sure to link Andrew's channel as well as personal channel? But yeah, EMP Shield supports us outside of you know the affiliate stuff because they are part of our community. They even sent a Christmas uh, last uh, last Christmas or the one before. I want to say maybe that both. Uh, they sent a Christmas video where they walked around their uh, factory and everybody said basically Merry Christmas to the Fugle fam. They have helped Fugle fam members that have called them uh, with also, you know, spent hours with people on customer service and things. They're really, they go above and beyond, especially for the Fugle fam. Obviously, uh, they actually are in this stuff too. Like they know. So thank you, EMP Show. I'm sorry, so sorry I missed you. I'm sure that was early on in the show. And then Joseph Newhouse, thank you for the the trees. It looks like a super sticker of trees. Survival Stew, Deb Taylor, thank you again. Anthony Man, uh, Watcher, Project Exodus, Stereo Olitz, everybody. 
Um, and then Dex, uh, over, uh, I, I, oh, and then, oh my goodness. Okay. So we got, um, we've got, uh, let's see here. We've got several pictures here. So Dex, can you explain all of these pictures? Yeah, so there was just earlier today, I had, I had mentioned it too when I was talking with Bob, I had been looking at some of the flights and flight traffic, uh, especially watching what was happening uh, around uh, Moscow and the Ukraine. And I happened to catch this one. And I got to say, somebody told me that there was a drone up uh, in it, around there. So I went looking for it. So I'm not the first one to find it. I'm not trying to take credit for that. But I did take this screenshot that is uh, from Flight Radar, and it shows a a um i want to say that was and i just lost it looking for, at your screen but it's a uh, the type of drone it is if you look at the bottom of the picture um uh, of the picture it'll tell you uh it's a global hawk and that's a surveillance drone um so that thing took off from greece and it was running a route uh across kiev and it headed i think in the picture I've, where i captured it it was still headed east but it right about where it is there it sort of made a u-turn and came back um, across the northern uh, half of the Ukraine. So obviously they were running surveillance with drones across uh, the country of Ukraine um, with U.S. drones, and that one was, was out of Greece. The other one I saw that was really interesting was a, a large uh, cargo ship. It's Antov, I think is the name of it. I may be pronouncing that wrong, uh, but it's one of the really, really large, I think it's one of the largest, uh, second largest, but the most large, the, the largest per weight or something like that. Um, that was flying out of Moscow <clears throat> and I was using a different system and I lost it. It went off radar, but then it, it picked back up here on flight radar 24. They had it and you can see it was basically headed down uh, to the Black Sea area. I never saw where it ended up landing, but this is the type of stuff we, we try to do. And I know a lot of other people do this and they, they, they sort of look at the traffic and see what's going on. And like neither one of these by themselves are just going to be like, oh, that's, that's the, the telltale. But seeing this type of activity and the, the amount of time that we sort of take to try and look at this, I know Bones does. Bones also sends me lots of pictures when he's seeing activity going on. Um, but this is sort of the stuff that, you know, we all can sort of do from, from our phones or from our desks, so to speak, if we're trying to, to be alert and see what else is happening. And like I said, I was monitoring all day long, C-17s just taking off, flying all the way over to Europe and turning around, dropping off and coming right back. Um, either either into Germany or all the way back to UK and then sometimes coming back to the US. So, um, but yeah, that's what those pictures are, those captures we made today. And uh, uh, that last plane is a US Air Force, but a similar system as far as <clears throat> these are the big, big transport planes that are taking, uh, you know, any number of things, including tanks, whatever it may be that they want to move. It's these these uh, planes that do it. Uh, you can play football on that. that. That's a C5 you were just showing. That thing is huge. I've walked through them. They're, they're massive. Well, when you see the zoomed in picture of how big a person is, I mean, well, in fact, uh, the movie Greenland, that those planes that they're s sitting in and you see just hundreds of people lined up in it, I believe that was a C5. Those were C5 uh, galaxies uh, with their tails up and they had several there, uh, you know, headed to Greenland, right? So fr freaky stuff, uh, especially just considering if we ever need to do that in real life, uh, just not a fun thing. Uh, By the way, that's also the plane I told you guys the other day that can travel as slow as 88 miles per hour. Yes. Which is slow for a plane, especially being that massive. Yeah, no, it's it's not, uh, not a fun, fun thing to go over. Am I also going to show right here there is an actual tweet from president uh from the west wing reports uh do you want to explain that real quick yeah so this is just we had talked earlier about whether or not um uh the current administration is going to be at um uh, camp david so he did actually leave uh and this is um also uh, or confirming that there's a scheduled call tomorrow, which I think most people know about. We've we've already talked about it a little bit, but there's a call tomorrow between um, Putin and JB uh, that I think he's taking first thing in the morning uh, on uh, at Camp David. So, so and and by the way, we can't actually know if he's at Camp David or if he just took a if all the press and media just watched him get on a plane and who knows where 
right? Um, we're not allowed to sometimes know exactly where he is. They could say he's at Camp David. They have systems in place. They have uh, decoys. They have ways to... Uh, they even have, a, 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 I mean, not a clone, but a, essentially somebody who looks exactly like Biden uh, to, you know, be his double. They, uh, every president has body doubles. Uh, every Almost every leader in the world has a body double. Uh, down to surgery to make them look like th them, you know, from ears to noses to tattoos, birthmarks, whatever it may be. So kind of crazy timing. And then also to think about all of the the weird jackhammering and stuff that's been going on at the White House. Um, do we know if the walls are still up? They they had concrete walls placed around the White House a couple weeks ago, almost. Yeah, they, they're they still there. And they came out and said what they were for. And they don't go all the way around. They're only in the front. And they are construction barriers for the fountain repair that's going on. Okay. Um, again, they tell us. And the fountain's under repair, so. The one video that I saw, and it, maybe it's changed since then, the person walked around the entire thing and it was there. So I, I guess that makes sense if they took down part of it. I was just thinking, man, you there was removable parts it looked like so they could put uh, like almost like a castle. So just kind of odd, uh, odd things happening everywhere. So I guess we look at everything with a little bit of skepticism. Uh, pure blood Irishman. Thank you. Says, Hey, Hey from Ireland Fugles. That's awesome. I love that. We have people from all over the world watching this. And, and again, if, if you haven't subscribed already, another reason why you should is because we are watching this all the time. Uh, we are both, you know, listening to the Fugle fam as much as we can. Uh, our Fugle family, the, our audience itself are digging constantly. So if you want to get updated with everything, uh, just as, you know, as, as, as fast as we can, then make sure to subscribe. And then Dex, um, I'm going to let you finish out with, uh, energy. And then of course the web only content. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if you are not familiar with energy, I highly recommend you go take a look at it. We mentioned it before and they work with EMP shield and actually EMP shield has made, uh, protection specifically for uh, energy solar system. So if you don't have a solar generator or you haven't gotten into solar yet, you definitely want to look at this platform for your solar needs or for your uh, solar generator needs. So this thing um, can power a, a lot of power in a very small box that can actually be portable or you can make it as big as you want. So if you want to power your whole house, you can just stack up you know, stacks of these batteries. It's a very modular system. But if you want to make something portable or take it with you on, uh, you know, on the go, or you got to get to your bug out location, you want to bring power with you. This is definitely the device to do it because you can, you know, recharge this thing in a matter of hours, like a few hours with uh, four panels really quickly. It's got a super fast charging system on it. Um, you can actually charge it from the wall. You can charge it from solar. You can charge it from your car. You can charge it from all three at the same time. It's like the most versatile device we've ever seen. I mean, there's like all these features that you just wish would be in one and they actually found a way to put everything in one device. It's the most sought after solar generator. So if you're not familiar with it, go take a look, uh, learn about it. If you need power, if you need a generator, definitely consider Consider the battery and the solar system because it is quieter. It is. Uh, it doesn't put off toxic fumes. You can put it in your house, and it's not going to damage. You know, it's not going to give you a carbon monoxide poisoning or anything like that, right? So, it is really the safest uh, and best way to go, especially in a um, SHTF situation where everybody may be looking for sound and listening to who's got generators to come. You know, uh, uh, you know, take the spoils from those places. So, you don't want to necessarily be that target. Um, so go take a look, marfuglenews.com slash energy, and that's spelled I-N-E-R-G-Y. Make sure to use the code Marfugal, and again, uh, that helps support Dex directly. In fact, that's a great way to support uh, Dex directly. Um, again, I we have to uh, we have to figure out ways to uh, power ourselves financially. So uh, I appreciate that everybody that has patience with. Uh, I think it's like something like 3% of uh, 3 of the two hour show is uh, our advertisements. And again, uh, we appreciate that you guys support things like this. We're choosing products. One, we believe in two uh, that we believe that will either save a life or make a life better. So thank you everybody that supports us. 
God bless you. Thank you so much. And again, if you can't go through us, go through another YouTuber that you prefer uh, that you want to support. Uh, that's what we firmly believe in. So thank you. And then <clears throat> Dex, lots of freaky stuff. Um, quite literally uh, freaky, freaky stuff. Yeah. <laughs> there certainly is. So if you want to see the rest of the show, catch or, or what would be the rest of the show, so to speak, of content that we have found uh, out there, we've curated, we put it together for you. Everything we can't necessarily talk about, too hot for TV, too political, too far to one side, too opinionated, it is there on marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show and scroll down to web-only content. You can see who our new nuclear waste disposal person is. That's uh, not a joke? Been placed. That's no, not that's, a joke? Uh, there's two tweets with, uh, with of that person. And no, that's the new appointed by the administration in charge of nuclear waste. I thought that was the big brother on Home Alone all grown up. I am not kidding you. <laughs> well, the, you saw the next tweet. It might be a little too... Uh, <laughs> too too much for me, for some people to see plenty of other things going on um, what uh, new... in the world and this guy is in charge of nuclear waste disposal and that kind of hits home to you with what what is it Hart hartford or whatever you have a big nuclear waste place right in washington yeah am i gonna see this guy I am in shock. Why would, I mean, if you have a picture like this, normally you're not getting hired anywhere, let alone the White House. What? It's wow. Maybe this is the new times we're living in. Everybody needs pictures like these to get jobs. I don't know. Oh my God. I don't this reminds any. me of those, those eighties version pictures where, you know, now people are doing them for fun where it's like the family and they're all wearing 80s clothes with big rim glasses and then like the dad's picture will be like kind of faded in behind but giant you know just like looking off into the thing now this is the new version you have to have yourself one of one of these pics okay i i'm joking completely uh please don't do any of these pics and don't ever send them to us but again thank you everybody for coming uh <clears throat> as adam yeah i just want to make sure you saw the uh jet that we had over on d line we run out of time We've no got about oh my gosh left um uh i did see gone girl i, I did shout out gone girl is that it okay. was something okay. that that's i missed it. i just want to make sure i may have been on the oh phone no 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 I just... no i i made sure to say hello to uh gone girl and, and really do appreciate everybody over there thank you maui racing realtor uh, appreciate you as well thank you for the ninja guinea says happy aloha friday fugal fam mahalo adam dex and the fugal fam uh and then king 5a3 mr bean uh released the quacken uh k kishara uh we've got uh blue rose we've got irish american patriot thank you end times it's nice to see you and i i, I meant to say hi to you earlier in fact i kind of waved earlier but uh thank you end times if you're still here and then uh, Lisa K23, uh, Analog by Nature. Everybody that stopped by tonight, thank you. And uh, just a reminder uh, that there is another channel, Marfugal News. Make sure to follow the Twitter, at Marfugal. When you go over to Twitter, you will see uh, that's where we do a lot of our notifications. Um, for a couple weeks there, I had a broken phone. Um, and I was able to access it on computer. But again, that's why I've not been tweeting. Uh, my screen was specifically... It was hard to type or do anything. So I could get on there and check it, but I couldn't type. Uh, so that is fixed. I, I'm going to be on Twitter a lot more. Uh, it's just kind of a pain in the butt just to go on your computer just to tweet something. So again, thank you everybody for being patient on that. But I still have put out the notification before every show on Twitter. So make sure to go over there at Marfugal. If you want to send something to me, uh, the DMs are open. And then, uh, again, also, adam at marfuglenews.com. If you have information that needs to get out, let us know. Uh, and you can always forward dex at marfuglenews.com. It's now time for the shout -tro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout-out. It's a shout -tro. Thank you, Gone Girl, Triple Seven, Susan Donahue, EOD Vet, and Veteran Steve. Thank you, everybody. Love you. Be safe. Be prepared. And Marf out.
Thank you, our top supporter, Gone Girl Triple Seven. We're gonna make one for you. On the street with my Stephen McMahon Pure Island for an Irishman Bong bongers in the alley Baker in the Serafino Everybody get up Up and down and we know Greg Davis and Don Paulio Hey John that everybody knows Everybody got a love for y'all Thank you. 